Welcome to r slash reddit revenge. This is a story of someone getting back at someone with revenge after being wronged. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story. Realtors who came to the house didn't close the front door, so I left them a note. The second story. Man at work was constantly lying, but I discovered his lie when he couldn't tell the details. The third story. Coworker took a lot of days off and sick days, so she was left without a holiday. And the first story is, showing my house without proper notification, I'll make your sale that much harder. A few years back, I found myself moved to a new city for the company I worked with at the time. I was lucky enough to have my work put me up in a hotel for a couple of months until I found a place to rent. Unfortunately, this was a university town, and I had moved there just before fall semester started, meaning there was very little in the way of options. Thankfully, a coworker offered to sublet a room in the townhouse he was also renting in. Score, I thought. Cheap rent, close to work, good friend living a floor above me, and it's a townhouse, so no yard maintenance required on my end. It should also be noted that this unit was for sale. However, the owner was asking an insane amount of money for a place that was worth maybe three-fifths of listing price. This meant that while there was some interest in the house, it all disappeared as soon as they did a walkthrough. By the time I moved in, it had been on the market for a good three years according to the archived internet pages I had found at the time. Anyway, the owner was also the kind of guy who would take your money as soon as the clock struck 12.01 a.m. on the first of the month. But should anything actually fail in the house, he'd take weeks before fixing it. We ended up having to go through arbitration more than once to get emergency repairs reimbursed that we paid out of pocket. Anyway, the first few months went by without an issue. It was winter, and considering the brutal snowfalls and temperatures we got during that time, there was zero interest in the house, because anyone with any brains migrated to the coast for the season. However, the snow eventually melted, and white lawns slowly turned green. It was around this time that I started noticing a few odd things around the house when I came home from work. The door was often unlocked and occasionally actually open. The first time I saw it, I assumed my roommate had simply forgotten to lock the door when he left for the day. The door wouldn't actually stay shut if the deadbolt wasn't latched. I phoned him and reminded him to do it, mainly so the cats wouldn't get out. He said he thought he had locked it, but figured he simply remembered incorrectly. No harm, no foul. Then the roommate went away for a couple of weeks, and I started noticing things get even odder. Lights I knew for a fact that were turned off or doors around the house I knew were shut, due to the cats not being allowed in specific rooms, suddenly found themselves turned on or open when I came home from work. I knew it wasn't my girlfriend, as she lived out of town at the time. It wasn't my roommate because he was on the other side of the country, and I knew it wasn't the owner because there were no girls living with us at the time. Quick aside, the only times the owner would do an inspection of the house was when he knew one of the girls would be there alone. One, it's illegal for a surprise inspection, as 24 hours notice must be given. And two, freaking creepy dude, ew. One day after coming home to yet another instance of my front door swinging in the breeze, I noticed a realtor's card on the kitchen cabinet. Aha! I rang that particular realtor up and beat out the poor receptionist for her boss leaving my door freaking open during the day. I actually still feel really sorry for doing that, but I was having such a crappy day, and she just happened to take the brunt of my frustration, and she couldn't transfer me to the realtor. I then called up the landlord who, surprise, surprise, didn't answer the phone. I left a voicemail telling him to talk to his realtor about giving proper notification prior to showings, and to tell everyone to lock the bloody door. Naturally, neither my roommate nor I had never heard back from him, but we had an uneventful next couple of weeks, so we figured something must have happened. Yay! Those couple weeks go by, and I found myself managing my store's night crew staff. This meant working nights myself, so I had to sleep during the day. Okay, not a problem. My first job was in the film industry doing almost nothing but night shoots. Should be a piece of cake. Nope, it took me almost a week to get used to falling asleep at 9am. Didn't help that the heat was starting to pick up outside, and as the house had no central AC, I started sleeping on top of my covers, nude. I'm sure you can see where this is going by now. One day I'm in the middle of a fitful sleep when I'm woken up by the sound of my bedroom door being opened. I momentarily thought that perhaps my girlfriend decided to come by, so I didn't really give the door opening much thought. I knew the roommate worked during that time, so it couldn't be him. Next thing I knew I hear two women scream and the sound of my bedroom door slamming shut. Someone yelled out, I'm so sorry, which was followed by the sounds of people quickly rushing down the stairs. Now I'm still half asleep and haven't quite processed WTF just happened. A few moments pass before everything clicks. I grab my cell phone absolutely incensed and call the landlord and realtor again. Landlord voicemail. Realtor apologized to the receptionist and asked super politely to forward me to his voicemail. 
Leave a nasty message on that. Of course, hours go by without a response from either. So I hatch my petty revenge plan. The owner was asking a huge amount of money for this dump of a unit. By this point, I knew the place well enough that I could point out all the deficiencies and problems the house had. I had also researched the RTA, Residential Tenancy Act, and found that it leaned heavily in favor of renters in very specific cases that pertain to my issue. So with all that in mind, I wrote out this nice little note that I left pinned to the inside of the front entrance. I ended up revising it a couple of times over the following days to go into more specific laws that were being broken and exactly what sort of fines both the owner and realtor could expect should I decide to pursue it, but that's essentially the gist of it. The note kept disappearing every couple of days, which I assume was from various realtors showing the house and didn't want the potential buyers to see it. I finally ended up getting calls from both the owner and his realtor telling me to stop putting it up. I told them both that should the house be shown one more time without proper 24-hour notification, then I will be taking proper legal action against the both of them. Funny enough, I never came home to the door unlocked again, nor had a random stranger walk in on me while sleeping nude. I got the last laugh a couple of months later though, because I was technically subletting the place and the original roommate on the month-to-month -month lease had already left by that point, I told the owner I was moving out the next day. I had started painting the house at one point, but the paint I was provided was super crappy, watered down Walmart P, and wasn't given any painter's tape or edging brushes to use. So I did as crappy of a paint job as I was legally allowed, according to the RTA and GTFO. Place is still for sale to this day. The second story is, dealing with a ridiculous liar. A number of years ago, I worked in a large office. Following yet another pointless reorganization, I was transferred to newly created small team. My teammates' jobs had nothing whatsoever in common with mine, but hey ho, they had to put us all in some sort of team in order to control us somehow. A new supervisor for our small team was duly appointed. He was a bit younger than the rest of us and had no practical job experience, but he had an MBA, which impressed the bosses, and the rest of us didn't. The new supervisor started quite quietly, but he soon found his voice, and almost every word out of it was some sort of ridiculously fantastic lie. Not the sort of small white lies that people tell for financial gain or to get themselves out of trouble, but gigantic Walter Mitty-like whoppers that would make a dishonest fisherman blush. I take people as I find them, so having no reason to think otherwise, I actually believe some of the early lies, but soon got the measure of him. His lies were so ridiculous that you would almost think that he was setting up a joke, but the punchline never came. He was a clever, funny guy, and otherwise really good company, but his ridiculous lies were just too much to take. The rest of our team were fully aware of the lies, and we often joked about his latest whoppers in his absence. I remember one particular cracker where he took the story from a popular TV advert at the time and just changed the location to somewhere local and put himself in the story. A guy in a nightclub with his friends. Man meets minor celebrity in the toilets and asks the celebrity to pretend to know him by approaching his table and greeting him by his name in order to impress the man's friends. When the celebrity later approaches the man and his friends at the table and greets him by his name, the man responds, not now, I'm with my mates. This was such a well-known advert at the time that it was incredible that he would use it. I sat back to back with the supervisor in the office, so I was an easy target for him to talk to when he turned around and wanted to share his latest fantasy story. As time went on, I found it incredibly disrespectful that he thought I was stupid and gullible enough to believe his lies. It is difficult enough to call anyone out on their ridiculous lies, let alone your supervisor, so I had to come up with something devious. I finally decided to record the details of the lies in detail and created a little password protected document names, dates, locations, events, and all sorts of minuscule details. I almost started looking forward to hearing the latest ridiculous lies so that I could add it to my numbered list. Now, you need to have a really great memory in order to be a good liar, because the fine details of a lie are much harder to recall than something that actually happened, so that's where my petty revenge kicked in. Using my detailed list, I started to raise his previous lies a week or so afterwards, as though they were somehow impressive that I wanted to know more, and then I would politely press him on the detail, whilst feigning admiration with an open-eyed, curious expression on my face. I was inwardly delighted whilst watching him squirm awkwardly as he tried to recall what he had told me previously. His eyes would roll upwards and he would stare me in the eyes, as if that would convince me more. Of course, he always failed miserably on the detail, and each error felt like a goal to me. Some of the rest of the team were fully aware of what I was doing, but kept their heads down and bit their lips as they listened in. I'm not sure that it did much to stop the flow of ridiculous lies, but it made them slightly more tolerable in the knowledge that they would be added to my list and the details would be used to torment him a week or so later. The third story is... Revenge on Lazy Coworker I work in IT, and over the pandemic have mostly been going into the office. In my suite is also general office, internal deliveries, archiving, all the little jobs to keep the firm going, accounts and reception. 
These lot were in the entire time, working incredibly hard to keep things going. Honestly, they are troopers, the lot of them. Well, except one. I'll call her Tabitha. She's an office junior and has been for 20 years. Why is she not moved up the ladder? Well, because she's not very good. Even on jobs she's been doing for years, she makes mistakes, and her work ethic has never been brilliant. Something changed at Christmas. Since then, she's been off work, full-time worker, more than she's been in. Her excuses range from migraines to bad stomachs to anxiety to vague excuses like I've had a bad night. You may be thinking, well, you're being very harsh on her. She may be having a really rough time. And with what I've written so far, you'd be right in thinking that. So let me give a bit more. You see, she's very self-involved and talks about herself a lot. She'll come back in after having a migraine for a week and let slip that she went to a lighting store to look at lampshades. Or that during the week she had extreme anxiety, she went to the football match. Stuff like that. She also ignores sickness reporting procedure. You have to ring up on the day, speak to the head department, tell them what's wrong and how long you think you may be off. She gets her fiance to ring in, sends a text or doesn't ring at all. She's also been told repeatedly that she must follow the procedure but still ignores it. Our suite, with the various departments, is quite close. The perception of Tabitha has steadily worsened over the past eight months, to the point where some people cannot stand to look at her. There have been several instances where there's been only one person in general office, normally three, because Tabitha is not turned up and it's causing too much stress. The first part of the petty revenge is that we sometimes have Fizz Friday, where in the afternoon we share a bottle of Prosecco. If Tabitha's in, we don't have it. When we did have it, she would never bring in any Prosecco herself, but was always first to get a top up. The second part is my petty revenge. The other day, one of the general office staff was off ill, and the other has to isolate because COVID. Tabitha was due to have Wednesday through Friday off on holiday, and was very vocally irritated that she was canceling her Wednesday holiday, and made a big fuss that she did so to help out that she'd have to be on her own and very woe is me kind of stuff. The reaction of everyone else was like, are you effing kidding me? Not only have all of us had to hold the fort by ourselves before many times in our respective departments, general office have been put in that position multiple times this year because of Tabitha calling in sick so many times this year. So today I gave the general office supervisor, who's feeling better, a wireless mouse with the connector in Tabitha's PC and encouraged her to mess with Tabitha's mouse at random intervals on the odd days she's in. She seemed very taken with the idea. To give you perspective, she's been off 91 days sick this year. At the moment, there's about 160 working days so far, and she's taken about 15 days holiday as well. The next story is... Don't want backups? Okay then. So, I'm by no means an expert at network engineering, but I am an engineer who works on networks for very large oil and gas plants. Well, a friend works at a small company and they asked me to help with getting their data accessible via the internet. Because it's a close friend, I said sure and called the owner to talk specifics. Come to find out they have exactly one hard drive that gets passed around to store all company data on. I told him that was insane and he needs redundant backups both here and at a third party site in case a fire destroyed everything. I gave the cheapest option I could that was basically just to buy two NAS systems off Amazon and the drives for them. Would have cost maybe $500. He would keep one at the office and one at his house. I could set them up to auto backup plus the employees could have an online shared drive that they could dump files into over the internet. He immediately said that $500 was way more than he could afford for this type of thing and just told me to get the current drive online. I repeatedly told him this is the worst possible thing you can do but he didn't care. So I just plugged the drive into their router and set up the computers to be able to access it. I sent a CYA email to him and never looked back. So that was about a year ago now and my friend sends me a series of frantic texts saying they lost the drive and if I know how to recover data from a formatted drive. I say no but there are companies that can but it might be expensive. For whatever reason, they called an actual IT company out to do something, and he accidentally formatted their one drive and lost everything from the past 15 plus years. Now the owner is furious with me, and since I don't work for him, nor do I have an IT company, I just said I told you so and hung up. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications.